Yeah, good morning. Myself, Dr. Pradeep Jain, Professor in Mechanical Engineering Department at Jatmarka Engineering College. Continue with the third lecture of additive manufacturing. Today we will discuss about CAD, STL and Silicon. As you are aware, additive manufacturing refers to fabrication of parts layer by layer. It involves adding raw materials successively in layers to create a solid of predefined shape. The process is fully automatic and it offers many advantages over traditional manufacturing process. As you are aware, the first step to produce the part using additive manufacturing, put the design of the required part in a numerical data. There is a wide range of sources for 3D model, CAD data input from additive manufacturing. For preparing a CAD file, we need a software, 3D software, solid software. We can engineer a variable aware with 3D CAD software like uh, uh, IDEA, ROI, CATIA, AutoCAD, and different uh, open source uh, software is also available to create the 3D models. That 3D model basically uh, work as a raw material for the manufacturing purpose. As we already discussed, there is no machining operation required for this additive manufacturing. We can directly create a part using this 3D model. As you can see here, this is the process, a generic method of additive manufacturing. First of all, we have to prepare a CAD model, solid modeling, digitizing or scanning. Apart from the creating a solid model using the CAD software, we can convert a scanning model or MRI data or any type of 3D data into CAD file. Then we have to convert this CAD file into a format known as the STL file format. Then we have to manipulate this STL file. After generating the STL file and manipulating the STL file, we have to create the support structure. Then the next step we have to serialize the STL file in different layers. After uploading that uh, G code or slicing files into the 3D printer where we want to produce the part or physical object, after creating the part, remove the uh, support section, then there is a post processing operation. So, this is the generic method of additive manufacturing. What is CAD model? Most of RP systems use a CAD model as the main source for the data input. The CAD model can be a solid model or a surface model. To fabricate any design in current additive manufacturing system, the 3D model, it may be a surface model or a solid model, has to be transferred to STL, standard tessellation language, format which is the most common standard interface between CAD and additive manufacturing system. The STL model is mathematically sliced by intersecting it with horizontal plans, each slice represents a cross section data for the part. The layer thickness is the distance between these plans. What is this STL file format? STL file format was developed and published in 1987 by 3D systems for converting 3D CAD models for use in stereolithography apparatus. This is the first reality manufacturing system, SLA, and has become the de facto standard for the data input for the all types of additive manufacturing system. The input of slicing is a standard STL which is commonly used to represent CAD models in additive manufacturing process plan due to its simplicity and ability to tessellation of almost all surfaces. How we can generate this STL file? The STL file format is generated using a tessellation process which generates triangles to represent the CAD model. These triangles are described by a set of x, y and z coordinates, each of three vertices and a unit normal vector to indicate which side of the triangle contains the mass. A still file with the surface triangulation includes a finite set of triangles satisfying the following condition. Each edge is shared by at most two triangles. Each edge is shared by at most two triangles, a vertex shared by any number of triangles, a vertex of a triangle or you can say the tessellation process can be shared by any number of triangles. 
that the connectivity each triangle has at least one point in common with another triangle. It is must requirement to connect a triangle with the another triangle. So each triangle has at least one point in common with another triangle. Not to known property, if a vertex shared by a second triangle, then it is also a vertex of the second triangle. It is a not to not property. No piercing, no overlapping, no triangle has an intersection with the interior of any other triangles. A national file consists of a list of triangle facet that of which define the surface of a dimensional object. Each facet is uniquely identify unit normal, a line perpendicular to a triangle and with a length of 1. And by three vertices, because we can say that is the corners of a triangle, the normal and each vertex are specify three coordinates each. So, there is a total 12 number stored for each facet. Each facet is a part of the boundary between the interior and the exterior of the object. This is the STL file ASCII format. As we can start, we can see this format, STL file ASCII format. Second time description of each uh, command used in this STL file. This is a solid ASCII file. The start of a solid to convert it into the STL file. First, we have to define a normal, a facet normal by its uh, uh, coordinates, its by that coordinate of this normal. It, basically, this normal is uh, defined the orientation or direction of the facet to identify the material side, which material side we are going to consider. Then, the outer loop is start, the start of the triangle vertex. The vertex can be defined by different x, y, z coordinates. There are, each triangle has the three vertex, the coordinates of uh, each vertex is given in this and x, y, x, y, z coordinate for the each vertex is defined. Then the one complete triangle is defined, then uh, we can end this loop and of the triangle vertex. So, first triangle is defined by a, there is a uh, facet normal and there is three coordinates x, y, z. Then end loop, end facet and end solid. So, this is a simple you can say uh, one block of a STL file in SK format. As you can see in the figure, this is the triangulation uh, installation of uh, this uh, solid model. We can convert any type of shape, any type of shape as will be visible on the screen, any type of shape converted into triangulation. And we can also manage, also manipulate the size of these triangles okay, from the very fine meshing to the very coarse meshing. When we require high accuracy, then we need a fine mesh. The triangle size is very fine and the number of triangles on a face is larger as compared to the coarse fine. The advantage of this fine mesh is that the accuracy of the object is increased, but the time required to process such type of STL file and the memory required to keep or store such files is also increased. So, we have selected optimized uh, triangle size uh, without, consider, without compromising the accuracy of the STL file. How to slice the geometry? So, slicing the geometry requires the data from the bottom to the top. So, first we have to find the cutting plane. Okay. To slice a geometry, we need a cutting plane. The program scan STL file picks the jet coordinates of all the facet and find the top. The bottom of the geometry, x minimum, z, z minimum, z maximum, and the layer thickness to z minimum. So we can calculate this cutting plan z direction by adding the layer thickness to the bottom coordinate of the facet. So z minimum plus layer thickness to find out the cutting plane or current plane basically. Find the facet that intersect with the cutting plane. The program scans a still file to pick one facet at a time. The Z coordinates of its three vertices compared with the Z height of the current plane. Then we can calculate the current plane or cutting plane 
it between z minimum and z maximum so z minimum and z maximum are in one triangle the program ignores the facet that does not intersect with the cutting plane and proceed to check the next facet Next, the final lines that intersect with the current plane. When the facet which intersect with the cutting plane is found, the program slices the facet according to the seven possible cases divided into five groups. In one group, all vertices away from the cutting plane. In the second group, a one point in the cutting plane with the two remaining vertices in the different regions. The third group, one point in the cutting plane with the two remaining vertices can be above or below the cutting plane. Group four, two vertices lie in the cutting plane, and the remaining vertex can be above or below the cutting plane. Group five, all the three vertices in the cutting plane. So we can say to find the lines that interact with the cutting plane, we have to divide into five groups. In, as we discussed in group one, all the vertices are from the cutting plane. Okay. Means all no vertex is passing through the cutting plane. So one point in the cutting plane with the two remaining vertices in different regions. One point in the cutting plane with two remaining vertices can be above or below the cutting plane. All these five groups can be defined by this given graph. So there are total four conditions we can say: the group one, no vertices is passing through the cutting plane. The group two. One vertex passing through the uh, cutting plane. Group three, there are one vertex is passing through the cutting plane. Another vertex is cutting through the another cutting plane. And we can say in group four, two vertex is passing through the cutting plane and two vertex is above the cutting plane. These are the these are the five conditions that can be satisfied. All the three vertex in the cutting plane. Now for each of these triangles, the program has to find which lines. Intersect with the slicing plane by checking Z A, Z B, Z C okay, by comparing the Z distance between A B and C. So Z A, Z B, and Z C of the of one triangle. So we can see in the figure three vertices of one triangle at the intersection points as well. The coordinate A and B and C are the three vertices, and X by Z. Is a cutting plane, so we can consider, we can find out which cutting, which vertices is passing through the cutting plane, and which vertices is above or below the cutting plane. So find x y coordinates of the intersection. So for each of these lines, we will find x y coordinate of the point where the edge is intersected by that slicing plane. The general equation of find the point coordinates. Is X minus x one divided by x two minus x one is equal to y minus y one divided by y two minus y one is equal to z minus z one divided by z two minus z one. So by connecting the intersection points in each triangle, a set of straight lines will be formed. The slicing output is a list of lines in a random order form a closed contour. This is a slicing algorithm flow chart. How to slice? A uh, file, STL file. So first, we have to open the STL file and scan one line. As we know the process of converting a STL file from the CAD model, so we can convert any CAD model into STL format. Such type of conversion is uh, available in the parent software. If you are going to use any software, you can develop, you can create a CAD file. CAD model, 3D model. Then you have to convert that 3D model into a STL file, or even by scanning different data, different pictures, we can also convert in STL format. So once we open the STL file, the outer loop is started. Read three lines containing coordinates of the facet. Then Does the triangle intersect with the current plane? If the triangle intersect with the cutting plane, find the lines which intersect with the current plane. Then find the coordinates of the intersection and store lines segment in slicing file. Then end of file, close STL file. This is slicing operation. If 
any one of the condition is not satisfy then we have to repair the stl file we have to redesign the stl file then we have to rescan the stl file as we can say there is a then we have to construct the control how to control construct the control the control are closed polygon that do not intersect with each other the start and the end vertices of a line are called the head and the tail of the line respectively the position of the head of one of line is the same position of the tail for the neighboring line the head to tail search connect the line by checking the coordinates of the head of one line with the tail of a neighboring line this comparison process should produce a correct slice control so this is the algorithm a control construction algorithm flow chart so first we have to open slicing file and transfer first line segment to a control file then read the next segment then read the neighbor line the transfer the segment and reorder control is closed all segment transfer the seven close the control so this is the simple sequence of generating the or construction of a control if any one of the condition is not satisfied then we have to reopen the slicing and restart the slicing the final transfer segment not included in the control file after uh, constructing the control we have to fill the control the so next operation is contour filling so contour filling is one of the most common problems in graphics and picture analysis as in rapid prototyping or additive manufacturing where the contour is defined in polygon and the interior of the region has to be found there are many ways to solve this problem partly check algorithm is a technique used to decide whether a point is in the interior of the polygon partly check algorithm are based on the fact that a straight line intersect any closed curve such as the contour of a region and even number of times by counting the number of intersection and finding the first intersection the segment between the first and the second intersection is inside the contour the segment between the second and the third intersection is outside the contour when the lines are tangent to the contour the point of contact must be counted twice as intersection as we can see in the figure when the lines are tangent to the contour the point of contact must be counted twice as intersection as shown in the figure the point 1 2 3 4 counted the twice because these points are intersect with the tangent of the contour the algorithm is not restricted to a simple connected polygon it will fill any number of regions if their contours have been sorted together so this is how we can fill the contour so as we can see all the five operations okay so for slicing of your algorithm first we have to find the cutting plan as you can see then we have to find the facet that intersect with the cutting plan then find the lines that intersect with current plane then find the xy coordinate of the intersection then we have to construct the contour then the contour filling operation this is all about what we can develop the slicing now we have already discussed about this generic method of additive manufacturing the first operation of first process which is additive manufacturing is the preparation of cad file to prepare a cad file using any 3d cad software we need to consider some aspects of design because the design for additive manufacturing is somewhat different for designing for general purpose solid model design for additive manufacturing we have to consider the different criteria 
the design model can be converted into HTML file format or can be easily serialized as well as it can be manufactured by the current technology available technology of additive manufacturing. So by creating a CAD model, the first and foremost requirement, then we have to convert this CAD model into STL file, form, file format. This is very essential to convert this uh, CAD model into file format, STL file format because this standard tessellation language is developed for the additive manufacturing purpose. For the first SLA machine, this is developed for the by the 3D system. This is de facto standard. Nowadays, every additive manufacturing machine use this standard format. Sometimes we have uh, more than one STL file. Then we have to manipulate <coughs> these STL file to merge in a single object. So then we have to manipulate the STL file. Sometimes we have some <coughs> hanging part or hanging portion or hanging uh, uh, development uh, in this uh, object, then we have to generate the support material or support structure. So this support structure and the build operation is very important uh, for additive manufacturing. So we have to generate the support structure. Then we have to convert this final STL file into the different layers by actualizing along with it. The layer thickness basically depends on the strength required into vertical direction. If the layer thickness is more than the strength is obviously is not so good. So to produce the high strength part we need this layer thickness must be less as less we can provide. Once we convert it into layers and slicing the STL file, then the 3D printer or the developer machine can produce the physical object considering the slicing STL files. When the part is manufactured or produced, then we can remove the support structure. Then there is a post processing statement for finishing and painting operation on the developed part. This is all about the CAD model, STL file generation and the slicing of a CAD file. These three operations are very essential for additive, any type of additive manufacturing process. Nowadays, each additive manufacturing machine has its own software where we need only a CAD file and STL file the software can convert that STL file into different slides or different layers. There is no need to worry about this slicing. Every additive manufacturing machine has its uh, facility to convert your STL file into different layers. The different layers parameter is based on the basically the accuracy required, accuracy and strength required of the final part.